Once upon a time, there was a lazy girl who lived in a small town. This girl never liked to work. Instead, she would sit all day in front of the mirror and daydream. She always complained about her shabby clothes and never tried to buy new ones. One day, the lazy girl went to the market. While walking past the shop windows, she bumped into a young girl named Karen. Ah! The two of them fell to the ground at the same time. Karen's glowing red shoes caught the lazy girl's eyes. These were the shoes she had always dreamed of. Well, I really like your shoes. Oh, really? Thank you. Yes, I think they are very nice too. Could you tell me where you got your shoes from? Karen explained that her shoes were the only ones and were custom made for her. The lazy girl was very sad when she heard this. But if you bring me three bags of gold, I can give them to you. The lazy girl accepted this offer, saying that she was actually very rich, even though she did not have that much gold. However, the lazy girl, who had never worked in any job before, got a job at a bakery the next day. The baker asked her to make 10 loaves of bread and place them in baskets. The lazy girl began to knead the dough with difficulty. She was already bored when she just got the second loaf of bread. Ugh, this job is not for me. I'm getting dirty. When the baker wasn't looking, she crumpled the paper bags on the side and threw them into the basket. She placed three loaves of bread, which she had barely made, on top of them. Thus, to make the bread appear like there was more. Wow, you finished it in such a short time. Well done. Here's a bag of gold for you. The lazy girl ran home just as she grabbed the gold. She never went back to that shop again. Only two bags of gold left. <laughs> Once I earn them, the shoes will be mine. It was the next day. The lazy girl got a job at the grocery store this time. The green grocer asked her to remove the rotten fruit. But the lazy girl didn't want to touch the rotten fruit. Oh, but these rotten things will ruin my nails. <sighs> when the green grocer turned around, she arranged the good fruits on the top row. Thus, the rotten fruits remained at the bottom, and she could avoid touching them. How did you arrange it so neatly? Well done! Here's a bag of gold for you! The lazy girl took the gold and ran home. She never went to that grocery store again. <sighs> Just one more bag of gold left. The lazy girl was so tired and bored with her work that she fell asleep while dreaming by the window. She dreamed that she was dancing at a ball. Everyone around her was admiringly watching her dance with her new clothes and shoes. See how beautifully she dances! I can't take my eyes off her shoes! How beautiful they are! The lazy girl suddenly woke up. Uh, I'll deceive one more person, and then I'll have another bag of gold. She immediately went to the market. This time she got a job with a tailor. The tailor asked her to sew patches on the skirts with the right colors. But the lazy girl chose irrelevant colors for each patch and never managed to sew it properly. Ugh, my fingers hurt because of the needle. Ugh, I can't do that anymore. The lazy girl gathered up all the skirts and hid them aside. When the tailor came and asked, she said that the owners of the skirts came. They liked the patches very much, and they took them away. Oh, that's great. Well done. Here you go, for your good work. A bag of gold for you. The lazy girl ran home as she grabbed the gold. She never went to the tailor's shop again. 
she took the three bags of gold she had hidden in a corner and went to Karen happily. Karen, look! Three bags of gold! I earned them all with my hard work. Come on, give me the shoes. Karen took the gold and handed the shoes to the lazy girl in a box. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. These are magical shoes. They don't hurt only honest and hardworking people. The lazy girl didn't pay attention to what Karen said. She immediately slipped the shoes on her feet. She was so happy that she started walking around the market dancing. She saw a beautiful dress in a window. She wanted to stop to look at it, but the shoes wouldn't allow it. Uh, hey, what's going on? I can't stop! Help me! Help! Everyone in the bazaar was watching the lazy girl who was dancing and jumping in amazement. Look! Isn't that the girl who deceived us? Oh, it's indeed her! That girl tricked me too! The shoes made the lazy girl dance in the market for hours. The girl's feet were so swollen after that she started to cry in pain. <laughs> Help me! My feet hurt so bad! <laughs> I promise I will be a more honest and hardworking person from now on! <laughs> the baker, the green grocer, and the tailor, who felt sorry for the lazy girl, rushed to her aid. They managed to catch her, albeit with difficulty, and remove the shoes from her feet. And the magical red shoes danced away by themselves. Oh, thank you for saving me. Even though I lied to you and didn't do anything right. And you helped me despite that. After that day, no one called the lazy girl, lazy girl again. Because she earned her gold by working honestly and without being lazy in every job she got. So she bought herself new clothes and a pair of shoes she loved so much. The only magic of these shoes was nothing but the joy of earning honestly. The Lazy Girl Once upon a time, a father and his two young daughters were living together in a land far, far away. One of the girls was very diligent, and the other was very lazy. You barely help at all, and I'm exhausted. Oh no, you are already doing the cleaning. Why should I get my hands dirty now? Their old father was a hard worker, and he was always tired. The only meal they had was soup and some dry bread in the evenings. One day, the old father made a request of his daughters. My dear daughters, you know, I love you both so very much. I've been thinking. You are both adults now, and it is time for you to take more responsibility. I want both of you to find a job and work. You are right, Daddy. I will find myself a job. And what about you, my daughter? My sister should get a job, because, you know, that's so her thing. But I think I'd better do the housework, Daddy. The old man was happy to see his daughters so eager. The next day, while the diligent girl left home to find a job, her father came to her. My dear daughter, I have some advice for you. Never refuse someone who asks you for help. Always be diligent. Love your job. Do the job that was given to you to the best of your abilities. Thank you, Daddy. I will never forget your advice. That's my girl. Bye-bye. The diligent daughter set off to find her job, while the lazy daughter, who said that she would do the household chores, did nothing. The house was getting more and more messy and getting dirty every day. Hmm. The diligent girl walked for days but had not found anyone to work for. After a while, 
the diligent girl saw a tree with dried branches and roots. Hello, young girl. Can you clean my dry branches and give me some water to my roots? The diligent girl then cleaned all the dry branches of the tree until her palms were bruised and watered the roots with her own drinking water. Ah, thank you, young girl. But now you have no water left. It's okay. You needed help, and I helped you. I can walk a little more and find water for myself. The diligent girl continued on her way. Farther on, she came across a hearth with broken and cracked parts. Hey, young girl, can you repair me and make me look better? The diligent girl took a handful of mud near her and patched all the cracks on the hearth. Thank you, young girl. But you got so dirty because of me. Oh, it's okay. Clothes don't matter. You needed help, and I helped. The diligent girl left the brand new hearth behind and continued on her way. After a while, a lovely lamb appeared. But the lamb was black, like coal, from head to toe. Hello, young girl. I accidentally got into the coals and got dirty. Would you bathe me in that lake over there? The diligent girl washed the lamb by the lake. The lamb was white and soft as before. Thank you, but you're drenched because of me. You needed help, and I helped. I was already very dirty. Now I'm cleaner. The diligent girl continued on her way. When it got dark, she came across a beautiful house. Oh, where seven fairies lived. The diligent girl entered. Hello, I apologize for coming to your home without permission. I am a young girl looking for a job to work. You can work here if you want, young girl. There are seven rooms in our house. You will only clean six rooms every day. But you must not go into the seventh room. The diligent girl accepted the job. She cleaned six rooms diligently every day. As Fairy said, for a full year. She never entered the seventh room. And when she had enough money, she asked permission from the fairies to return home. Of course, young girl, you can go home. I'm wondering why you never entered the seventh room. My father used to say to do the job right, no matter what. During my time here, my job was to clean only six rooms. And that's what I did. That's what you told me to do. We would like to reward you for your honesty and diligence. Come on, come with us. The fairies asked the young girl to enter the seventh room. When the girl entered, she saw a lot of silver and gold coins. Now, you roll around in these coins and any that stick to you will be yours. Diligent girl tumbled left and right in coins. She looked almost like a star with the money sticking on her. Then the diligent girl left the fairies to return home. On the way, she came across the lamb she had washed before. The lamb was covered with pearls. I did not forget your help, young girl. Take and get as many pearls as you want. The diligent girl thanked the lamb and covered her arms and neck with pearls and continued on her way. This time, she came across the hearth she had previously repaired. I did not forget the help you gave me, young girl. Take it, my warm breads. My lovely cakes are yours. The diligent girl ate some of the bread given by the hearth and took some of it to take home. 
and continued on her way. A little further ahead, she saw the tree. Its branches were covered with fruit. Come, young girl. I did not forget the help you gave me. Take it. All my grape juice is yours. The diligent girl thanked the tree and finally returned home. Thank you very much. What a fruitful experience. <laughs> her father and lazy sister greeted her at the door. The girl's bundle was full of gold and pearls. The lazy sister was very jealous when she saw that her sister was so rich. Look at all those coins. I must go find a wealthy family to get a job from. If my sister has pearls, I will get emeralds. The lazy girl told her father that she is leaving home to look for a job. Oh, okay, my daughter. But you couldn't even work at home. How will you find a job out there? Hmm. The lazy girl left before her dad could even finish talking. She walked day and night. A little further down the road, she came across a tree with dry branches. The tree asked the girl for help. Uh, hello, young girl. Would you clean my... Uh, I can't deal with you under the sun. My hair will get messy. Bye! Um, the lazy girl moved on. She saw a cracked and broken hearth a little further. Hearth asked her for help. I can't get my thin and delicate hands dirty for you. My nail polish goes bad. Bye! The lazy girl did not help the hearth either. Then she came across a lamb that was dirty like black coal. And the lamb asked her to give her a bath. Ew! Disgusting! Get out of my way, you dirty thing! The lazy girl ran away. What a lazy little lamb. Can't even wash itself. And came upon a huge house. The lazy girl took advantage of this and asked for work from the seven fairies who were the owners of the house. The head fairy asked her to stay for a year and clean only six rooms. Don't forget, young girl, you will never, ever be able to enter the seventh room. The lazy girl reluctantly cleaned all six rooms for months. However, one day she gave in to her curiosity and entered the seventh room. Instead of gold and silver coins, there were bees and bats inside. The bees stung the lazy girl in such a way that she was scarred all over. She was very hurt. The girl immediately left there and started running towards the house. As she ran, she saw the lamb, which she turned down her request for help. The lamb was covered with pearls. The girl wanted to catch the lamb to get some pearls, but the lamb ran away from her. <sighs> the girl continued walking and was very tired. At that moment, she came across the hearth that she turned down that requested her help. There were loaves of fresh warm bread on the hearth. When the girl wanted to buy a slice of bread, the hearth got hot and Lazy Girl's hands got burned. Hot, hot, oh, hot, hot, hot. When the Lazy Girl ran away from there, she came across the tree which she had refused to help. There were bunches of fruit on the branches of the tree. When the Lazy Girl tried to pick some fruit, the tree leaned to the right. The girl ran to the right, but the tree leaned to the left this time. Tired of running around, 
the lazy girl finally gave up on getting the fruit. She walked nonstop for two full days and finally got home. Her father and sister saw her returning home in dirty clothes and injured, and they were very surprised. The lazy girl told what happened to her with great regret. Oh, and I can't believe it. I hurt so much. Oh. My dear sister, now you understand how important it is to be hardworking. Remember, girl. When you are honest and hard-working in this life, you will be rewarded for sure. After that day, the lazy girl has not been idle and lazy since. The two sisters both worked hard and were rewarded well. And this small family had happy, productive, and peaceful days throughout their lives. Red Shoes Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a very cute girl named Karen. She lived in a tiny house with her mother and was a very happy girl. She would ask her mother about everything she was curious about. Mom, what are these tiny lights in the sky? They are stars, Karen. Everyone who lives on Earth eventually turns into a star and shines in the sky forever. Karen only had one toy, one dress, and a pair of wooden slippers she wore on the street. The wooden slippers her mother made for her were not very comfortable, but they were the only ones she had. One day, Karen's mother got very sick so Karen went to town to buy medicine for her mother, and along the way, she found a pair of red shoes in a box on the roadside. The shoes shone so beautifully that Karen couldn't help but bring them home with her. Look, Mommy, I found these by the roadside. Aren't they beautiful? Just right for me. These may belong to someone else, Karen. You should immediately take them back. But if they had an owner, she wouldn't have left them there with the box. Maybe the owner dropped it accidentally. Then they shouldn't have dropped it. I found them. They belong to me now. They're mine. Baby, listen to me carefully. I may not be able to buy you new shoes right now, but I don't want you to wear someone else's shoes just because of that. Please, don't be stubborn. Promise you won't wear these red shoes. Karen sadly promised her mother not to wear red shoes and hid them under her bed. Months passed by until one day Karen came home and couldn't find her mother in the house. She looked all over until she realized that her mother had become a bright star. The next day, on her way to her mother's funeral, Karen put on those red shoes. Those who came to the funeral couldn't take their eyes off Karen's shoes. No, How dare no. she wear red so shoes disrespectful. But Karen did not care because she loved her shoes. A good-hearted old woman passed by the cemetery. This old woman learned that this little girl was now an orphan and wanted to adopt her. Come with me, pretty girl. I will do my best to make you successful and beautiful when you grow up. So Karen went to live with the old woman for many years. Karen, you've been wearing these shoes since your mother's funeral. You need to take them off now. They're so dirty. No! I love my red shoes. Oh, Karen, don't be so stubborn. Come on, change your shoes. I'll buy better shoes, I promise. Karen did not want to offend the old woman, who had been so kind to adopt her. 
So she finally took off her red shoes and threw them away. Days passed until one day, Karen was playing in her new room with her new clothes and toys, and the old woman brought her a new pair of shoes. But Karen didn't like these shoes at all. But these are blue, very ugly. I don't like them at all. So for years to come, Karen missed her red shoes a lot. She grew into a beautiful young lady, but her stubborn attitude never changed. Even when the old lady brought her gifts. I don't want to wear this thing, but I knit this for you. I'll never eat this food. Make me french fries. At least take a little bite, darling. The old woman was very upset when Karen got up from the table without having a meal. She made french fries for her and took them to her room. At that time, Karen was taking off her blue shoes. Look, see, all my things are so small now. I've grown up. Well, come on then. Let's buy you new clothes and shoes. Then the old woman and Karen went to the store. Oh, look, just like my favorite red shoes. I must have them. Let's get these. Karen, you don't need fancy red shoes. You need shoes that you can wear respectfully. Like if we need to go to a funeral. I can only buy you one pair of shoes. Let's buy those black ones and go home. I am very tired. I don't care. If you don't buy both shoes, I'll walk barefoot everywhere from now on. <sighs> Little girl, I wish you weren't so stubborn. The old woman bought the black shoes for Karen and spent the last of her money to appease her with the red sparkly shoes too. They had to walk home on foot. The old woman's feet hurt a lot along the way and she could not keep up with the spoiled Karen. And Karen didn't care. She walked on home with her new red shoes. One day, the old woman told Karen that they needed to attend a funeral in town. Karen, be sure to put on your black shoes. Otherwise, it will be disrespectful at the funeral. Karen looked at the black shoes in her room. And then, at the bright red ones. She chose to put on the red shoes. When they left the house, she covered them up with her skirt so the old woman would not see the shoes. However, at the funeral, everyone saw Karen's shoes shining brightly under her skirt. They spoke amongst themselves about Karen's red shoes at the funeral and about how disrespectful the shoes were. When what was said came to the old woman's ear, she got very angry. You didn't listen to what I told you, and you put on the red shoes again. You're so stubborn, Karen. Show some respect. A handsome young lord, passing by at that time, was struck by Karen's beauty. He came to her and went down on his knees and gave her compliments. How beautiful you are, and so delicate in these beautiful shoes. Ah, uh, my lord, you make me blush. You must be a very good dancer. I invite you to the dance night in the palace tonight. Please come. With the happiness of the lord's offer, Karen started dancing with joy. But after a while, Karen couldn't stop dancing. Uh, uh, why can't I stop my feet? What is happening? Oh, oh! Karen started walking away from the old lady and the Lord while she was dancing. Karen, come back! Even though the Lord chased Karen for a while, he lost her. Karen's red shoes turned out to be more stubborn than Karen. 
They took her until top of the mountain and made her dance day and night for three days. Karen's feet hurt so much that she screamed at every step. Ah! Ah! Oh! Even though they got into the mud and prickly needles stuck, the shoes kept dancing. Enough! I'm very tired. I won't be so stubborn from now on. I promise. Please stop. Shoes, please stop. Stop. And when Karen said she'd give up all her stubbornness, the red shoes jumped off her feet and Karen, too, fell to the ground. And the red shoes kept on dancing without her. Karen found a stick and managed to limp home in pain. Her legs hurt a lot. She started to cry with happiness when she saw her house. The old woman greeted her at the door. They hugged each other. I know I was very stubborn, girl, but I promise I won't be like that anymore. After Karen gave up her stubbornness, things started to get better. One day, someone knocked on the door. It was the young and handsome Lord. Well, there you are, Karen. I tried to keep up, but you danced so fast. How did you do that? <laughs> Karen was glad to see the handsome and young Lord. That was the day the Lord and Karen's love began, leaving stubbornness behind. Karen lived a happy and peaceful life. <laughs>